This is a blooper trailer of the Season 1 cinematic that Riot Games themselves released all the way back in 2010. It ranges from things like showing Riot's old intro animation but the hand doesn't manage to shatter the glass, some clips poking fun at Earth, and this. Let's just say Riot was a lot more bold back then. Blitzcrank has by far been the most played champion in Earth in the last month, being played over 2.5 million times. Kaisa in second place doesn't even come close. Also, 1.1 million of you are terrible people. Yo, really quick guys, if you're looking to get better at League as well as gain access to a bunch of fun and useful stats while playing the game, you need to check out the app Professor, the sponsor of today's video. Seriously guys, if you haven't yet, you really need to try this app because Professor does some incredible things like import runes automatically for you, which is already a win. It lets you scout out your opponents during and before the games, which I cannot say enough how nice and useful this is. And you can now even see who's played with who recently. On top of that, there's even an overlay in the game, which is like your own little personal coach, and it tells you stats on what you can improve on. There's also a summoner spell tracker that syncs up with other Professor users automatically. And plus, before you even get into a match, you can see which champs are strong right now with their tab that shows the best champions at the moment. Seriously, guys, I cannot emphasize enough how good this app is. I mean, you can literally scout who's having a bad day and then camp the crap out of them. It doesn't get much better than that. So go download Professor for free with my link in the description. All right, back to the video. This is a graph showing the rank distribution from August 2022. And while it's already October, it still probably looks fairly similar to this now, considering it's been consistent throughout the last few months. However, it has changed a fair amount since the start of the season, and this is the graphic from February 2022 for comparison. Most notable difference is that there's a big spike with people being ranked silver 4, gold 4, and even plat 4, which is to be expected since getting out of bronze and silver were probably a lot of people's goals. And after they hit that, they're most likely satisfied. And for gold players, a lot of them probably just wanted the Victoria skin reward. Speaking of which, in case you haven't heard yet, this year's Victoria skin is Sejuani. 75% of League players are male, and 75% of players are under the age of 25. The most popular age groups, however, is 21 to 24 year olds, followed by 18 to 20 year olds, and then right after 25 to 30 year olds. Also some other interesting data, 32% of the League of Legends community only plays the game and doesn't watch esports. 42% of players play League and watch esports, and 26% don't play League anymore but still watch streams in esports. One of the craziest things about the last Gen G versus Dom Juan Kia game I think a lot of people missed was that Canyon accidentally smited Doran instead of Baron. It's so sad too because honestly they could have won the game if they had gotten it but it's also sad because Canyon played out of his freaking mind that game stealing Drake twice before and if he had smited Baron here he would have gotten it. If you look even closer you can see that his smite came down just before Sejuani's and the Baron was low enough that it would have secured it. It was so freaking close but it was still an insane performance by him and Dom Wangia. I know it's going to be quite the shocker to you all, but not all of your reports to Riot are reviewed. In 2021, Riot said they averaged around 240 million reports a month for a total of just under 3 billion reports. That means for the amount of staff they have, every person would need to review about 6 reports per minute to keep up with them. Also something else interesting is that out of the players that did receive a penalty in 2021, less than 10% of them received another one within the year. Also on the note of reports, I'm sure most of you are aware, but Riot has a zero tolerance word list, which means if you type that word or a variation of the word in, it'll most likely be an automatic penalty from their system. It will also send a message out to everyone in chat notifying that a specific user has been muted. They said that you'll still be able to say cuss words and the system will be more focused on catching slurs or other offensive language. Riot also mentioned that they're expanding this list even further next year, so either you're going to have to reform or get a little creative with your insults. They also mentioned that League currently issues about 700,000 penalties a month across text detection, AFK detection, and inting detection. Which when you think about it, out of the 240 million monthly reports, it isn't actually that many. Nine years ago, the League of Legends subreddit made an r slash League of Legends in 10 years post, creating what they thought the front page would look like in the future. Or to be more accurate, February 3rd, 2023, about a year from now. The post ranged from predicting where worlds would be located to talking about new champions added into the game like Pingu the Penguin. And apparently Pingu is pretty freaking busted. 1.5 5 AP ratio is a bit too overpowered. The good news though is it looks like Teemo's finally going to be removed from the game, but it also looks like Freak will be running for Senate in Massachusetts doing tons of damage to our economy. There's a lot more in here, but so far it's looking pretty on point. I am really hoping that Dignitas Walmart wins Worlds though. I think 2023 will finally be their year. Here's some old concept art on what Bard's abilities was potentially going to look like. There were a lot of cool portal designs and even some interesting Q concepts, but my favorite has to be the Bard health pack shaped like a chicken. There's a glitch that's been going on 
recently in ARAM where the tier 2 turret when destroyed would show the old destroyed turret model instead of the new one. To be honest, it's kinda crazy to think that these graphics are still even in the game, just coded under a bunch of random stuff. On top of that, sometimes the destroyed turrets will still display health bars with no health. So yeah, League is kinda full of bugs right now. Also for reference, here's a clip of the old destroyed turrets and what they looked like. In 2015, Riot Brazil built a 29 foot or 9 meter tall League of Legends turret in Brazil, which gets you thinking how crazy it would be to have a real summoner's rift scaled to this size that you could walk through someday. I mean, it will probably never happen, but that would be insane. League of Legends has a surprising amount of champion voice actors and actresses who have also voiced characters in Naruto. For example, Katarina was voiced by Tara Platt, who also voiced Tamari. Yasuo was voiced by Liam O'Brien, who voiced Gara. Aurelian Soul was voiced by Neil Kaplan, who voiced Madara. And Poppy was voiced by Kate Higgins, who also voiced Sakura. All of these are a lot more noticeable too when you start mixing and matching the voices. For example, these are Poppy's voice lines with Sakura's face. Wait, you're here? I thought you were there. Didn't I just knock you away? This is Gara's voice, but with Yasuo's face. All of that hatred cried out for power, thus I was born. And this is Madara's voice, but with Aurelian soul on the screen. Wake up to reality. Nothing ever goes as planned in this accursed world. Madara and Aurelian soul's characters are honestly so similar that you could seamlessly swap so many of their lines and you probably wouldn't even notice. A lot of people don't know that in ARAM, you get a reroll for every 150 ARAM points that you have. This includes champions that you own and that are free that week. So if you're ever wondering why you get less rolls than someone else, that's probably why. In this last month for solo queue, Aatrox has been the most played top laner, which I'm guessing has a bit to do with world since he's been picked or banned in almost every single game. Kane has been the most played jungler with Yi just right behind him. Silas has been the most played mid lane champion. Misfortune for bot and Lux by a decent amount actually for support. And overall, the most played solo duo champion this last month was Misfortune being played 5.3 million times. Also, as a side note, Zeri had an absolute atrocious 42.93 percent win rate. You know things are rough when you're doing worse than Rise. In 2018, for the LPL Summer Finals, a real-life Summoner's Rift was created and featured in the opening ceremony. In addition to the model being created, they also used artificial reality to help fill in some of the extra details. Honestly, if League of Legends continues to grow, I think one day Riot will have a model or hologram created that would fill up an entire stadium floor and then have holograms of the champions and minions being projected onto the map live. They could keep the normal view that we have now on a screen up above that would follow the action in big fights like they do today, but you could also have the option of seeing the entire map and how teams are moving around below. I mean, how insane would that be? Having an actual physical thing you could see would put esports events on the same level as normal sporting events. It would probably change things forever. Plus, I feel like this technology will be here sooner than we think. This is what it looks like to play League of Legends with severe red and green colorblindness. As you can see, everything is a lot less intense, unless you're actually colorblind, in which case then it's probably looking normal to you. Honestly, the biggest takeaway from playing a full game like this was probably that it's almost impossible possible to see death timers and who's dead. For reference, here's a comparison of what it's like without and with colorblindness. Puppy, subscribe. And if you're still not convinced, here's a seal too. Thank you. In the Cassante trailer, you can see blueprints or drawings of Uction's weapons pinned on the wall. If you wanted to buy a spot into the LCS, it would cost you at least $13 million. Quite recently, actually, Koi bought 60% of Rogue's LEC spot for 20 million euros. So yeah, if you're ever planning on starting your own LCS team, which I'm sure that was most of you, you better have some cash lying around first. In case in case you didn't know, Uction received the greatest buff yet in the last patch, and you can now infinitely swing around with his E. You can even do it on the section of the wall here if you click on the corner of this, and then click on the wall here. Then you're all set to swing around forever. However, this new buff has unlocked some new interesting strategies for him, like being able to proxy both lanes at level 1 by just constantly swinging around. Surprisingly enough though, this proxy strategy was already being done by Neela and Lee Sin beforehand. Neela and Lee would do the same thing, but Neela would also have her XP bonus so they get levels even faster. Nala flashes over, Lee Sin uses W, and they both proxy the waves. And they just eat everything. They're level 5 at 3 minutes. I mean, at this point, now that Uction can do this too, it might just be worth sitting in their base with all three of them. A while back, this guy got a pentakill on Kha'Zix with one finger. He says he uses his left hand for clicking and then rests his pinky finger below the spacebar and uses his index finger knuckle to do the clicking. Kinda crazy. This is a graphic made right after the group stage ended and so far, World's viewership is down about 40%, which is kind of insane. But at the same time, it does make sense when you think about it. The main league viewership and player bases on the 
other side of the world so time zone wise they're playing at a terrible time for peak viewership don't get me wrong it works great for us in na but everyone else is kind of getting boned however we did have to watch worlds at 3 a.m last year so i guess it's just our turn the new empyrean pike skin has an emote where he touches grass and then it burns away poking fun at gamers never touching grass also there are some crazy features coming along with this skin first off every time pike gets a multi-kill there's a beat drop depending on how many kills he got a double kill for instance has two beat drops a triple three quadra four and so on and the craziest part is that if you get a penta with the skin it'll rip open a new dimension this is the first time that ride has looked into doing something this big since yone's penta animation got cut out however i will say i think that this is a lot different since it doesn't affect your champion itself and could be the start of more skin features like this being added into the game this is a chart that shows data on the progression of the league of legends player base for the last three years and spoilers we've gained about 70 million average monthly players Cassante's head to body ratio size is probably the worst we've seen since old Trindamir. I mean, that is the tiniest head I have ever seen for that big of a body. Also, random note, Cassante looks surprisingly similar to the Giga Chad dude. Hillisang now has the most total deaths in world's history with 217 in 53 games. Before that, Perks was the leader with 214. However, Faker is actually about to pass him soon, but he's also played in about double the amount of world's games as Hillisang. This is a video posted a long time ago about someone's very British dad playing League of Legends, and honestly, it's the perfect guide on how to play Yi. So what's happening here? Uh, that is attacking me, but I just run away. Then I see this bloke here is trying to ambush me. So I press that Q button and he is slain. Or he appears and then he is slain. And then that bloke comes in and I do the Q thing, he is slain. And then I go and eat him, he is slain. And I do the inhibitor, but it's all over Rover. And then they come out, so I slay him. Now I'm taking tap shot, so I flash out the way. Then my posse, they does their tricks. <laughs> It's that easy, baby. And just like that, it's over Rova. A while back, someone on Reddit suggested that the team's color of whoever slayed Baron should be shown in the animation so you can clearly see who got it. And it looks like one of the rioters actually passed it on too, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see this in the future. The Crystal Rose Chromas were made in collaboration with Tiffany and Company, a luxury jeweler retailer. Here's an update on how the player with the highest level in the game is doing, also known as No Life Finn. He is now level 3,429. And crazy enough, he actually has some competition now. There's a player named Ipa on the Latin American server who is level 3313 and is also slowly gaining on No Life Finn, so who knows? The long reign of No Life Finn may come to an end soon. It's kind of crazy to think about, but in 2011, Fnatic got $50,000 for winning World Season 1. However, only one year later, the Taipei Assassins got $1 million for winning Worlds. It kind of just shows how much growth there really was between 2011 and 2012. This person made Teemo Shroom Boba Pills and then proceeded to make it into an entire team Timo Dessert, which is quite the snack. In 2019 and 2020, Vivictus Gaming rostered an all-female team from the LCL that infamously ended up going 0-28. But on top of that, they also averaged 27 deaths a game. They also had the shortest average game duration in the LCL at 22 minutes and 11 seconds. And at the end of the 2020 season, they were ultimately kicked out of the league for poor performance. They are allowed to return as players individually, but never again as a full team. This is probably the biggest quirky outplay I've ever seen. He strategically let himself die, dropped his package in a bush, and then let the enemy team walk over it, letting himself get a quadra kill. I doubt they were, but if they were pre-made, I can just hear the voice comps in my head of them wondering what the heck was happening. Also, can we talk about that Lux Q hitbox at the start of it all? Very interesting, Riot. Very interesting. This is a picture of one of Alistar's original drawings, which would have been made before Leak was even released. This is a chart showing all of Faker's teammates throughout his career. It's seriously crazy to think about how many players he's played with over the years when you throw them all together. Here's a glimpse of what it's like to play in a high challenger game on the Korean server. Plot twist, it was just an elaborate plan to transfer the red buff to Showmaker. If you have been watching Worlds, you should by now already be aware of the crazy bug that happened to the match of Top Esports and GAM. And if you haven't seen it, basically what happened is that Top Esports were trying to end, Karthus spawned and ulted, but Jackie Love's mod didn't proc, causing them to get hit with tons of damage, <clears throat> ultimately resulting in them getting wiped and then GAM being able to turn around and end the game. We'll never know for sure if Top Esports could have 
have actually still won if Ma was proc'd correctly, but it definitely would have been insanely close. Fnatic's coach also commented on the matter, saying that Riot won't say anything about the bug because their rule set is that if players don't spot the bugs themselves, it won't be accounted for, which just sounds like a stupid rule. Like, how are you supposed to keep track of every little detail while also focusing on the game? What's also crazy is that there have been several other game-changing bugs like this already at Worlds, like this one where the NAR boomerang doesn't come straight back, but instead turns around and hits Jax, which also leads to first blood. And this clip where Darius's ult doesn't get the reset in the G2 JDG game, where if it did, G2 might have been able to win the team fight and then the game. Needless to say, it's been a rough year for League of Legends glitches at Worlds. I didn't actually know this, but apparently not even another dimension can stop the power of Akali's E from killing you. This is what would happen if League of Legends was commentated over like a horse raising caster. No, so with a clean cleanse, he's on that Callista. Now Callista, she moves short and sweet like an ass scallop, but it's gonna be enough. In the hands of that man from Germany, he's like a pilot in a plane. The first kill goes to him. He takes down Swain. And jeez, that's an odd sight. The lads from Australia from down under getting knocked six feet high here in the top lane. It's a double, it's a triple, it's a quadra kill for upset. The 22 year old from Germany, he's been denied worlds so many times. He couldn't make it to foreign soil here last year, but he's looking to do it this year. And in his first game, it's the Penta kill. These are graphs taken eight years ago of showing the NA and EU rioters and their rankings in League of Legends. I feel like a lot of us just generally picture Riot employees as being high elo players, but it's also important to remember that a lot of them probably have never even played the game before. Some people in the art department, for example, probably have no reason to play League of Legends. And lastly, this isn't League related, but remember when Elsa insisted that the cold never bothered her anyway? Well, it did. In fact, as you can see, it bothered her quite a lot. Thanks for watching. Feel free to send any info or clips you got to outside joke, lol at gmail.com, and I'll see you next time. A huge shout out to my tier 3 patrons, Stefan, Noctak, and James. A huge shout out to my solo tier 4 patrons, Setrai. And thank you so freaking much to all my other incredible patrons as well. All right, bye.